Breaking news in U.S. naval strategy. On December 5, 2025, Secretary of the Navy John C. Phelan announced a pivotal shift in amphibious warfare planning. The U.S. Navy has selected the Daman Group's LST-100 design as the baseline for its medium landing ship or LSM program. This bold move redefines how the Navy and Marine Corps will operate in contested littoral zones and signals a break from traditional large deck amphibious platforms. The selection marks the first time a European naval design will serve as the structural foundation for a new class of U.S. amphibious ships. As I announced last week, we are fundamentally reshaping how the Navy builds and fields its fleet. Today, I'm taking the second major step in that effort, selecting the design for our medium landing ship an operationally driven, fiscally disciplined choice that puts capability in the fleet on a responsible timeline. The Secretary's announcement reflects deep strategic recalibration driven by lessons from the Pacific and Indo-Pacific theaters and the increasing need for agile, survivable platforms capable of operating inside contested zones. The LST-100, developed by the Netherlands-based Damon Group, is a modern take on a classic naval workhorse. Designed for beach landings, the LST-100 can carry troops, vehicles, and equipment directly ashore without port infrastructure. With a length of around 100 meters, a shallow draft of under 3 meters, and a vehicle deck capable of holding tanks, trucks, or containers, it brings flexibility and speed. Its bow ramp allows for rapid offloading in austere environments, while a helicopter deck increases vertical lift capability. Proven in service with several allied nations, the LST-100 is tailored for short-haul logistics and rapid amphibious insertion. For the Marine Corps, the medium landing ship will provide us with an organic littoral mobility capability in the Indo-Pacific and around the world. It provides us with a critical intra-theater maneuver asset that is able to embark, transport, and land Marines, weapons and supplies and equipment around the theater without requiring access to a pier. A year ago, the Navy canceled the LSM request for proposals when the conceptual design produced bids that were simply unaffordable. We applied common sense, went back to basics, and reassessed the program. We identified proven in-service designs that meet the Commandant's requirements and then scrutinized them for producibility, performance, and trade-offs. For the U.S. Marine Corps, the selection of a medium landing ship like the LST-100 is not just practical, it's essential. In the wake of the Force Design 2030 initiative, the Marines are reorienting from traditional large-scale amphibious assaults to small unit operations dispersed across island chains and coastal choke points, especially in the Indo-Pacific. They need vessels that are hard to detect, easy to deploy, and cheap enough to field in numbers. Large amphibious assault ships, while powerful, are too valuable and too vulnerable for inside the weapon engagement zone operations. Last month, with the concurrence of the Commandant and the Chief of Naval Operations, I approved the LSM design selection, the LST-100 landing ship transport, a roughly 4,000-ton ship with a range of more than 3,400 nautical miles that gives us the right balance of capability, affordability, and speed to field. The LST-100's cargo capacity, helicopter capacity, berthing, and crane make it an excellent choice for the Marine Corps' requirement of no less than 35 medium landing ships to support Naval Expeditionary Forces. The medium landing ships will enable our Marines to be more agile and flexible in austere environments where there are no ports providing the joint force the needed operational mobility within the adversary's weapons engagement zone. Enter the LSM based on the LST-100. It gives Marine littoral regiments a mobile, maneuverable logistics backbone for littoral combat. These ships can support distributed expeditionary advanced base operations, deliver reinforcements to remote islands, or extract small units under fire. Their size strikes a balance between survivability and risk allowing the Marine Corps to take bolder operational stances without putting billion-dollar capital ships in jeopardy. We are also changing how we do business in shipbuilding, starting from a complete 3D design and working hand-in-hand -hand with the designer. The Navy is incorporating a disciplined set of class standard equipment so that this ship is maintainable, repairable, and able to meet its operational availability targets in the real world, not just on paper. Once those standards are baked in, the design will be truly production ready, 
needing only to be tailored to each shipbuilder's specific production process. Currently, the U.S. Navy's amphibious warfare fleet is dominated by three ship classes, the WASP-class LHDs, the America-class LHAs, and the San Antonio-class LPDs. These vessels are formidable, offering flight decks for F-35Bs and MV-22S, well decks for LCACs and AAVs, and command and control capabilities for large-scale joint operations. But they're expensive, limited in number, and increasingly at risk in high-end threat environments. China's anti-ship missile arsenal, for example, threatens to hold large platforms at bay, challenging traditional amphibious doctrine. That's why the Navy has paused procurement of additional LPDs and is now pivoting to smaller platforms like the LSM. The current fleet also lacks the granularity needed to support distributed ops. The Navy's utility landing craft, LCUs, are aging. The newer SSCs, or ship-to-shore connectors, remain tied to larger platforms. By fielding 18 to 35 medium landing ships, the Navy hopes to fill the gap between overarmed capital ships and undercapable small craft, rebuilding its amphibious flexibility. The Marine Corps is fully committed to investing in the medium landing ship program. This platform is critical to ensuring Marines have the mobility required to fight and win in the littorals. Serving side by side with our Marine Corps brothers and sisters, the Navy is also on board with the LSM program, ensuring that when called upon, we're ready to fight and win today. The department will continue to innovate and reform our shipbuilding approach, integrating hard learned lessons from prior Navy shipbuilding efforts, proven commercial best practices, and streamlined acquisition. The selection of the Damon LST-100 design signals more than a procurement decision. It's a strategic course correction. It aligns fleet architecture with modern amphibious warfare realities. For the Navy, it offers a faster, scalable solution to close capability gaps. For the Marines, it's a logistical lifeline for warfighting in the littorals. And for the defense industry, it's a rare moment when a foreign design is chosen to meet urgent American operational needs. As the medium landing ship program moves forward, all eyes will be on how the Navy adapts the LST-100 to US standards and how fast it can field this crucial asset. This is a moment of transformation born from urgency and shaped by the realities of modern maritime conflict. It is the dawn of a new age for Navy shipbuilding.